I want to talk some about bot store because I think a lot of people aren't familiar with it and are maybe not using it in the way that I am or the way that I might suggest. So I want you to be familiar with that. I want you to be more comfortable with going and looking there or at least making that a habit of, of part of your bot build process. So the first thing we want to look at is bot store from a consumer perspective. And what is bot store and why should a consumer care? Um, the automation anywhere answer is that the bot store is the world's largest RPA marketplace. There's over 800 bots in the bot store and there's been over 100,000 downloads since inception. So it's a really big marketplace for a ton of bots. Uh, it's also the only RPA marketplace with a bot security program. And I know that comes up with a lot of enterprise clients and likely comes up with you know smaller clients as well. But, you know, hey, I'm downloading this bot. How do I know it's clean? How do I know it's safe? How do I know, you know, it's been secured, stuff like that. So the bot security program is there to give you that kind of confidence. And that's something that doesn't exist in other RPA marketplaces. The Micah Smith answer to why should I care about bot store from a consumer perspective is that it's an excellent place to find super creative content to use for your own bot builds. And so I kind of mentioned that in our in my own, you know, personal bot building process, but I will go there to help me speed up my bot building times. I'll also go there to make use of the expertise of others. So like I mentioned with that, uh, the Salesforce bot that I was building that accelerated the build process for me tremendously because I was use, using someone else's bot to help uh, me interface with that Salesforce API. The other thing obviously is that it's it's a great place to find really creative solutions to problems. I'll go there and I'll look through some of the bots. Hey, this sounds pretty interesting. I'll try that out. Um, and, and I'll pay attention to the way that the person who built it, um, the way that they did things. And maybe it will clue me into some things I could be doing better. So it's definitely as you're continuing to learn and even if you're an experienced developer, it's a good place to go and check out some of the content and see what's available. It also provides a great way for you to extend on the current capabilities of either version 11 or A2019. Um, you can go there, find bots that are related to artificial intelligence, cognitive automation. And so that allows you to really accelerate your own digital transformation journey as you start to work with uh, your RPA application. And then I think we would both uh, answer that enabling bot builders and from both business and IT to expand on the existing command set of Automation Anywhere is a huge lift to uh, anyone involved. And so as we think about the bot store, I would think of the, the consumer side is both some who are really IT focused developers and then some who are, you know, business developers or citizen developers, people who maybe don't come from a traditional IT background but are building bots and that's awesome. So I look at it like we're enabling both of those groups to be able to do things they maybe wouldn't be able to do otherwise, right? If I'm a developer and I'm really experienced but I don't necessarily want to have to go learn Salesforce API or learn some other API, I can just leverage what's already there and then that can accelerate my build process. If I'm a, a business developer or a citizen developer, um, I'm having access to stuff that maybe I wouldn't have been able to use before, right? Because someone else has built this connection to uh, an Azure service or an Amazon AWS service. Like now I have the ability to use a lot more stuff than what's available as the standard commands for automation anywhere. So for my benefits, we talked about some of these already. Um, I can speed my development up to 70% and half the cost while integrating intelligent and reusable components. Uh, again, you'll find that some of these bots that you download from Bot Store, you'll reuse over and over again in many of your bots. Uh, we'll talk about a couple examples of that here in a second. I can also learn how different commands are used. So especially as you're learning this or as you're starting to explore on your RPA journey, download some bots from Bot Store. See how they're implementing different commands. See how they're using the REST commands versus see how they're using a Metabot for usability. Go check those things out. Um, they will help you as you begin to learn and you can kind of dissect those bots and run them, see how it works. They all have documentation as well. So that can help you to really understand how to accelerate your bot building. Also lowered maintenance costs, right? So if I'm building something against an API, um, I'm gonna not have to update that quite as often as I might have to update something that's built off of screen scraping and uh, a user interface. That's normally the case. I mean, obviously I say that with an asterisk, um, but that should help me to have a much more stable bot. The other benefit there is that the vendor or provider of that particular bot will continue to provide updates to that bot. So I've got it, I've downloaded it, I see that you know something changed with the Salesforce API, something changed with the 
uh, particular Oracle application I'm working with. The vendor has then updated the bot. I can download the new version and I should be good to go. I don't necessarily have to figure out what's changed or what's different on my own. And then finally, uh, we mentioned this already, but deploying with confidence. So this is the first RPA marketplace with the bot security program to make sure that bots are developed with cybersecurity and application security best practices. And so you'll see a little shield icon on the different bots indicating their um, bot security level. And if you're interested in learning more about the bot security program, you can go to bot store at automation or botstore.automationanywhere.com and, uh, and see the bot uh, security program there. So I want to highlight a couple bots that I find particularly interesting and talk about why I think so. Uh, and I would suggest all of you to check them out if you're, if you're brand new to some of these. So the first is a utility bot, which was developed by Automation Anywhere for changing date and time formats. I have found this one incredibly helpful. Um, you can change, you know, convert date time formats. You can see the difference between two dates. Um, you can add to a date. So if I needed to, uh, let's say set a reminder for myself to do some kind of customer outreach after 30 days. I could have the bot automatically schedule that on my Outlook, right? Take the day uh, of today, go 30 days out, you know, set up a new meeting, send me an invite. So I could have that kind of stuff done directly using this bot. And so if you're not familiar with doing date time operations, I can tell you it can get really complex, especially when you're trying to do it all yourself. If I'm trying to add a day to a particular date, there's a lot of things I have to think about. Is this a day or is this a month with 30 days or 31 days? Is this a leap year? We just had one of those like a couple days ago. So uh, those are a lot of really complicated uh, situations you have to think through when you're building this kind of logic. It's best to just download this and then leverage it however you want. You can make use of doing time conversions and things like that. Uh, Excel utilities. So this one is really helpful. This was developed by a vendor RPA man. Uh, it allows you to do a lot of advanced operations on Excel. You can do pivots, you can use images, you can do formatting. There's also sheet and workbook, uh, workbook modifications. The coolest thing about it is there's no need for Excel to be installed on the local bot runner. And so this one is super helpful if you, you know, want to be really concerned about your licensing, especially with Office 365 or Microsoft Office. Uh, I can use this bot without having to have Excel installed, and then I can do whatever I need to on my spreadsheets to you know, do manipulations the same way you would normally, uh, as well as advanced operations like changing colors and fonts of things if I need to, or even pivots. The Salesforce bot, uh, I highlighted this one because this is one I've been using recently, but you can do create, read, update, and delete operations on both single or bulk objects in Salesforce. Uh, I'm still, you know, kind of learning Salesforce myself, but I found this bot to be extremely helpful as I've started to learn that I can insert objects or insert custom objects or insert standard objects, or I can read from objects and query objects. So uh, it's really cool to integrate this within your Salesforce application um, and then be able to have your bot talk to Salesforce in a more intelligent way. That's not to say that you can't use this plus screen scraping. So when I was building some of these bots that we were working on, uh, I would do inserts into Salesforce, but then I would go and do refreshes in Salesforce to make sure that the data was showing up like I expected uh, and kind of for more of a visual view because mine was more of a demo. But um, you can definitely use this as a part of the back end, but then also still do front end uh, Salesforce automation as well. Uh, entities from text. So this is one from a vendor called Meaning Cloud. Um, this is how you can start to really extend your RPA from rule-based automation to starting to look into more cognitive automation. And a first step for many people is IQBot, where you're starting to add that intelligence of being able to do uh, extraction of data from images. This is another cool example where you can start to um, analyze text. And so when we think about good opportunities for doing cognitive automation, I think of something like a, uh, a ticketing system, right? Let's say that I have an inbox that is my IT support and people just send emails there of like some of the most random stuff. It could be my account is locked out. It could be that my machine is having issues booting. It could be that my licensing for this particular software seems to have run out. And so people will send those kind of emails to that inbox and then it becomes someone's role to 
look through all of those emails and then figure out like, all right, what department do I need to assign these to or what person do I need to assign them to based on what kind of problem it is. And so using a bot like this, you could say, all right, I'm going to do some entity extraction from the uh, emails that we get. I'm going to have the bot analyze that text and I'm going to have the bot try to assign these tickets to the correct group. And in that way, I don't have to necessarily assign them all myself. If I have a high level of confidence in what the bot's doing after I've played with this uh, entities from text bot a little bit, then I can start to do those assignments uh, on its own. And so then I don't have to worry about doing that. The bot can automatically take care of, oh, this person is locked out. Let's send it to this individual. Or maybe we even trigger another bot to take care of unlocking that account based on who sent the email. So, you know, you can get really creative with that, but that's another cool bot to check out. From a developer perspective, uh, bot store is really interesting as well. So the first thing that I point out for developers is the fame and fortune, right? And that's kind of a funny way to say it, but bots on the bot store can either be free or paid based on an annual subscription. And so if you're interested in developing bots that you want to sell on the bot store marketplace, you have the ability to do that and you can sell those for uh, whatever within a, a meaningful uh, degree, you can sell those bots and uh, you can list them for sale. And then uh, obviously any Automation Anywhere customer would have the ability to go and pick those up. The other angle for developers is that you have the ability to demonstrate your experience and your expertise by listing bots on BotStore. So I say this because I get developers that will reach out to me and say, hey, I'm looking for a job in RPA or hey, I'm a, I'm a new student. I've been developing bots for a little bit, but I don't have a ton of experience. How do I get a job being an RPA developer? And the number one thing I always tell them is to build bots and put them on bot store. Whether they're free or paid kind of really doesn't matter. But if someone comes to me and they says, hey, hey, I want to be a bot developer. Uh, I have 15 bots listed on bot store. Go check them out. I can go and look at that person's work before they even come in for an interview. And when they do come in for an interview, if I've already looked at all of their bots, then we're not necessarily talking so much about what their experience is like so much as you know kind of moving into advanced topics of like hey tell me about why you did this development this way or tell me about how you would solve this kind of problem instead of like the really basic of like me asking you hey what command do i use to interact with the web object um you know you can really set yourself apart from other developers by having a catalog of your work on bot store and so i very much encourage developers to do that i've put my own bots on bot store obviously they're not tagged to me um, but there's some bots that I've written that are on bot store right now. And, you know, you can go check those out as well. Global customer reach. So the other cool thing about the bot store is that obviously we have, you know, really a global marketplace. Um, there's customers on pretty much every continent at this point and probably not on Antarctica. I think that would not be a true statement, but in a whole lot of countries, there are customers, right? And so you're looking at a worldwide marketplace when you think about listing your bot for bot store, either free or paid, right? Uh, there's, there's customers all over the place that are looking to accelerate their own digital transformation. And so they might uh, download your bot and use that as a part of their builds. And then finally, uh, for protecting your intellectual property, if you are doing paid bots, there is uh, license management and uh, infrastructure in place to protect your code. So you do have the ability to obfuscate your bots or metabots if you don't want that logic to be available for paid bots. And so, you know, if I've developed something and that's, you know, my intellectual property of the way this actually gets done, you do have the ability to protect that code when you're selling it so that someone doesn't just rip you off and take your code. Um, you do have the ability to protect that. So that is a part of the developer marketplace. So to get started with bot store, the first thing you want to do is uh, get started on your request. We'll talk about the page to do that here in a second. You can then start to build your bot. You can integrate license management and code protection if you're doing a paid bot. If it's a free bot, you wouldn't have to worry about that part of it. Uh, you would just go ahead and build and do your testing and everything like that. You would also uh, follow the best practices for optimizing your listing um, as far as putting documentation there, having some of the benefits and skills of your bot listed out. So um, you, would, you would post it and then be able to find it on that marketplace and share it with others. So if you're interested in developing for or even checking out bots on BotStore, go to botstore.automationanywhere.com. If you see at the top here, there is a link for uh, the bots. Obviously, you can see them by business process as well as by categorization. If nothing else, I would strongly encourage you just to go 
look at some of the different categories and see some of the bots that are there. There's some really creative stuff. There's some cool stuff. Even if you don't have necessarily a use case for it now, you might go check some of that stuff out and then find that, hey, that was actually a really cool idea. And now I think I can tackle a business problem that I didn't know about before. So check that out. And then on the uh, developer section, there is a link for developers. Uh, that will walk you through the process of requesting a global ID for starting to create a bot. Uh, it also has some links for how you can uh, go through the uh, GitHub repository where we have kind of like a, a dummy bot shell that you can start with as you're developing your bot. And that will make sure that as, as you submit the bot, it goes through as cleanly and smoothly as possible. The other thing I'll point out is uh, there is a point on the bot store that says bot idea. So if you click that, there's a little form that you can fill out. And if you have a bot idea for the bot store, but you don't think you can build it yourself or uh, you don't find that it's available otherwise, click on that bot idea link and you can share that bot idea with us. And we will try to work with different vendors who we know are developing bots to uh, to create that for you, right? And, and if they find that, yeah, that's actually a really good idea, we should try that. Or there seems to be some recurring patterns here. Um, then that will lead to the creation of the bot. So even if you, you know, don't necessarily feel comfortable with developing it yourself, or you're not the kind of person that's going to build a bot, um, share that bot idea there, and and we'll see if we can get someone else to build it. The final thing I want to mention here, and you can't really see it here on these listings, but each of these listings is from a different vendor, and that vendor could be a service provider, uh, that vendor could be an individual, but from a developer perspective. I think bot store is also beyond a way to set a reputation for your experience. It's a good way to get your name out there, right? So if you're an individual building bots, get your name out there. It could lead to new jobs or new opportunities. If you're a vendor who is building bots, get your name out there. It could lead to uh, additional service contracts that you might be able to deliver for people in the future. They've seen evidence of you being able to build bots. They've seen evidence of you building quality stuff on bot store. You know, your name is in the door. Um, and, and you'd be able to contact that uh, individual or that company that bought your bot to uh, see if you can possibly provide better service for them in the future. So as a quick recap, uh, establish your own or you can mimic mine bot building process. And just like we walk through the six steps that I'm kind of going through when I build a bot, it may help to think through that. I'm very much like a, a formulaic kind of thinker. And so I'm going to think through exactly what my process is going to be for pretty much everything that I do, even these sessions that I'm preparing, right? I've got a template that I go through. I've got what the points I want to hit are. And so uh, that's just how I think, right? But uh, that could be something that you try to map out and think through as well. Uh, as far as bot store from a consumer perspective, like I mentioned, bots are a great place to accelerate your development. They can also be great to dissect and learn from as you're just getting started. And then from a developer perspective, um, bot store is a great way for you to be able to demonstrate your skill set, possibly earn revenue. Um, so definitely check out bot store from either perspective and see what's available, see how you can possibly contribute. Finally, uh, recap, uh, make, let us make these sessions better, provide that feedback. We want this to be interactive. We want to know what you want to see. Like I said, there was a Twitter poll the other day. Uh, feel free to send messages to myself or the social team. Let us know how we can make this content as effective as possible for you. Okay. So that is it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week with another AA illustrate session for sure. Let us know feedback. Let us know how these can get better. We want to make sure this is effective content for you. All right. I will see you guys next week or someone will see you next week. All right. Go be great.